The universal human realities of place, time, and identity are presented in Bolivian World Tour as simultaneously contrasting and complementing worlds to articulate a dialogue among past and imagined future manifestations of the native Andean self during the age of globalization. After one year of hitchhiking from eastern Pennsylvania to the mountains of southern Peru, I settled in Bolivia in 2003 with the intention of documenting what I saw as a disappearing way of life for the country's peasants. Motivated by the silent indigenous presence in my own country's history, Bolivia, with a 60% native population, appeared to be the America that the colonists of the North never allowed to exist. Little did I imagine just how far-reaching the colonizing powers of the United States still are today. Five years later, it is a simultaneous consumption and rejection of American culture on the part of Bolivians, which is at the heart of my work in their land. Bolivian World Tour offers an outsider's vision of the phenomenon of cultural fusion that increasingly affects the Andean world of Bolivia through the seemingly endless acts of sacrifice, which such cultural assimilation demands as it unravels, slowly consuming all things original. This nonlinear narrative is without a present, replaced instead by the sacrificial act. The Andean custom of consulting the past in order to inform the present brings about new interpretations, as well as disintegrations of tradition. The knowledge of the past is treasured as much as it is forgotten. Bolivia is a land of extremes, where the white light and burning heat of the altiplanic sun is embraced by freezing shadows and bone-reaching wind after dusk, whose myth-endowed traditions of pre-Columbian Tinku fighting rituals borrow as much from Bruce Lee and Van Damme films as they reveal a pantheistic desire to offer blood and human life in sacrifice to the Pachamama, Mother Earth. Since the election of Evo Morales as the first native president of Bolivia in late 2005, increased representation of the country's majority has occurred on all levels of government, along with sweeping economic and social reforms, and a vast distancing of relations with the U.S. government, including the expulsion of the U.S. ambassador last year. There has also been much resistance within Bolivia's own borders to Morales' policies of change creating strong anti-government sentiment in the tropical lowlands of Bolivia's north and east, which has spread to urban centers throughout the country. This tension is often documented on walls in a political graffiti war, with one side painting a statement and the other side painting over the letters and changing it, or simply scribbling over the letters in the interest of saving money on spray paint, which is expensive by Bolivian standards. Historically, one of the greatest strengths of the Andean culture has been its capacity to survive by integrating foreign elements into the already existing cultural context. This is a process which requires unique forms of interpretation, creating something original out of the previously alien and unknown. At the speed with which cultures around the world are increasingly becoming swallowed into a global mainstream, this capacity of the Andean people to survive as a nation while maintaining their cultural links to the past is being put to the test now more than ever before. In a country where political demonstrations and intense religious celebrations in the streets and plazas are the norm, the lines between what is public and what is personal bleed into deeper notions of a common identity for many of Bolivia's people. I hope that these images express the spirit of such beliefs, which are increasingly alien in our increasingly self-constructed world. <laughs>